question and answer. So Alma, I'll turn it back to you at this time. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Dr. Sean, as well. This was very informative. Um, if you have any questions, please, you can. I know we have like right now four minutes, but we can we can put something together. And um, we had someone send us a private message, and I want to share that before we continue with the other questions. Someone was asking, do liquid items such as bread, cake, or pie batter work well in freeze drying? I know we said big goods don't work, but do the butter? I'll, um, I'll answer that. Um, from my experience on a personal level, not in our, not here in the office, but at home, I, I've been playing with a lot. Um, no, um, it hasn't worked well in the reconstitution. I, like, I don't know if it, it's breaking down cell. I don't know what it's doing. Um, but it hasn't been productive. Now, um, I have taken raw eggs and and whipped them, frozen them, broken them apart, and then reconstituted with the equal amounts of water again. And um, I've made quiches and omelets and omelet rolls, and they work phenomenal. So that does work, but the baked product with any kind of flour in it doesn't seem to, I don't know why. I don't, I'm not, I don't have the research to tell me why. And Carla, you might be able to answer that. I'm not 100%, but thinking about how the structures and how water is bound, because really what it's trying to do is removing water. So how the water is bound to that product really makes a difference. And how those bonds between carbohydrates and, you know, fat and water, how those bonds are mm -hmm. strongly um, connected, that does make a difference. And I'm, I'm guessing, and I, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing that the bonds between the fat and between um, water, if there's a little bit of water present, um, there's, you know, it, it's harder to break those to be able to remove the water with the little amount of, of heat that is applied, gently amount of heat that is applied during freeze drying. But, okay. yeah. Thank you. Please, I've just shared a link. Um, please, that's the post survey we were speaking about in the beginning. I mentioned the beginning that we'll share a post survey. We need your feedback concerning these webinar series. So kindly access that. And if you also want continuing education credits, you would have a request for an email there so that we can share with you a certificate for that. I think we've seen three questions. Um, so we can power through it. Where can we refer people to get validated and safe recipes for their freeze drying? Um, there's a question on freeze drying, sod, dough, starter, does it work? And the last one is since shelf life is not validated on a long-term basis, yeah, how can people tell if the food is safe after long periods of st storage? Are there clues to show spoilage? So anyone to address any of them? I will start with the first one from Olivia. So that's a great question. And one of the challenges that we have faced is that testing the, you know, using the machines that are available for consumers and manipulating the, the, the different settings is challenging. Uh, there is one brand that you cannot, you can hardly manipulate anything. It's all automatic. And whenever I talk to them asking about, okay, if I want to change vacuum, if I want to change the, the, uh, the, the freezing temperature, if I want to change X, Y, and Z um, for testing purposes, because that's really what we are trying to test. Uh, how do I do that? And they say, well, you cannot really do that because they're all sensors inside the machine. You cannot really do that, but we can customize one for you. And I said, well, that, that's not going to work because the consumers at home, we're not going to have a customized machine. So that's one of the challenges because um, the machine, one of the brands um, that I know has sensors inside the machine and it will sensor the outside humidity, outside the humidity, when I say outside, outside of the machine, the inside how thick is the product and how much water is there, uh, how much vacuum needs to be applied and all those things. So it does become challenging if we cannot manipulate those factors to be able to say to the consumer, okay, if you are going to freeze dry apples, you have to cut it this thick, you have to peel it, whatever, whatever, you have to pre-treat it with this, and then you have to freeze it at minus 33 Fahrenheit, and then you for X many hours, and then as you know apply whatever much vacuum for this many hours and then you uh you know remove vacuum and in your, your product is done when you don't have control of any of those steps it is hard to really validate recipes and so going back to your question olivia there's one brand that we bought one and we really quickly realized this is not going to work so we bought a different brand and we were working with the other brand that now we can manipulate most of the settings of the machine to be able to say okay we understand that if you have a, one of the brands that is all sensor based, then 
it is hard for us to help. But if you can manipulate some of those factors, vacuum, freezing temperature, or drying temperature, then we can help and say, okay, those are some of our recommendations. But um, I'm not really aware of any uh, institutions having uh, readily available recipes that were validated. Melissa, maybe you have uh, more knowledge on that. No. Um, so no, I think we're still learning. <laughs> I think that's that's the the challenge. Um, I think there's a lot of experimentation happening in the world of social media, and people are putting it out there as a, as a there's a learning community that isn't maybe um, validated with science. Um, and so I think there's a call here to action of those among us that um, you know have the ability and the capacity to 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 find those um, the evidence based uh, science here on the on that uh, recommendation. So I think there's uh, some action for us to look forward to in the next two to three years as we really dive into this topic. Um, but I am not aware of any validated recipes. Um, even going to the manufacturers, um, they don't even offer um, validated recipes. Uh, it's basically keep a journal and practice. So great. Thank you. Freeze drying sourdough starter is that the same as the butter thing? Because we have a question about that. Does it work if you want to freeze dry sourdough? That's a very interesting um, question, Cindy. Um, you know, I uh, my daughter has sourdough, and not to make it too personal, um, and I might just see what happens with that. Just out of curiosity, hadn't thought about doing the sourdough starter. But again, we're back to that flour. Um, component in it, it but the, the live um, culture that's in that of course would become activated again with moisture um, so I don't know that's an interesting one not sure what would happen now I will say that I think someone else asked about shelf life how do we know and again very good question um, been working on this on a personal level as well as here at the office um, we did a high um, liquid, um, I think uh, it, was, it was apple cider is what it was. Um, and we tried to freeze dry it just out of curiosity, froze it and then freeze dried it. Um, and it went into the um, pouch with, uh, it was completely dry. It was crystallized, it was crystals. And um, we had uh, the oxygen absorbers in it and six months later when we pulled it out to see what was happening with it, it had caked. So we did not proceed with it at that point because the moisture involved with it, I, I, I didn't know, I don't have any way of testing microbial growth at that point, but it had changed from the point of freeze drying to the point of use. And so I didn't take that risk. My family's not worth being experimental guinea pigs. It's just not worth it. Um, but there's a lot to be learned yet in that what are the clues to showing spoilage. If I see moisture, I consider it spoiled. Yeah. And also I, there's few studies on uh, freeze dried um, frozen fruits and looking at viruses and the beginning of the studies, you know, they found that norovirus could survive at, you know, for a certain period of time. And then when they actually did with hepatitis A, it was actually really um, the norovirus really underestimating how much it could survive. So not only the shelf life of the product, but what type of strain we are talking about, what type of bacteria, what type of virus. There is a lot to be learned um, during shelf life and then having those microbial points that we can actually count how much is surviving. And uh, of course, if you have a raw, then you know, you're know you just gonna have to cook it to, to the mm -hmm. current temperature. But if you have a ready to eat product, um, you know, inoculating that product and then doing the shelf life study and the microbial surveillance during that time to really figure out what's happening. Um, it's, it's just not really known. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shuan and Melissa. And thank you everyone for joining us. Um, we already 